All right, if you want to know how to design cool roof systems, but also make them healthy so you're not designing a system that is possibly going to mold or have issues with water or damage, then pay attention because I'm going to dive into what works, what doesn't, and how you can design cool details without having these issues. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome back to Design, Create, Inspire with me, Bryn Young. So I wanna take you through a design detail and challenge that I had when I was designing the wing house. The wing house is a kind of mid-century modern butterfly roof system. And the key detail I wanted to have in this was a continuous ceiling to eave detail where the clear story windows went all the way to the top and it was really seamless. So no header and also so what this meant is no attic. And the thing that I had to figure out was how do I properly detail this while getting the most minimal roof system, which now I will tell you at the end kind of what I would do differently now, but I wanted the most minimal roof system. The rafters had to span the entire space. I needed to make sure that I was properly insulating it so that I was creating, there was enough cavity there to create the R30 insulation that was required. I needed to make sure that water wasn't coming in, creating condensation, and I had to make sure that there was this seamless application for all of it. It was a challenge. Now, I had seen it and I have seen it everywhere. You look at all these mid-century houses and I'm like, okay, how is everybody doing this? And since then, I have learned so much about it. But what I wanna take you through today is some really critical design elements that are required for a detail like this in order to make sure that it is going to be a healthy system. And also this is going to be critical for you taking your exams if you are currently studying for the ARES. These details that I'm gonna talk about will be really helpful, especially for PPD and PDD and even possibly construction evaluation because we are gonna talk about things like ventilation, insulation, uh, condensation, water, all that good stuff. Right, are you ready? Okay, the reason why I came up with this concept which I love this idea. I haven't really done many videos about details. Last week I talked about uh, thermal bridging. So if you haven't watched that, definitely I'll link it here. Definitely go check that out because that is really helpful for your exams as well and also for your detailing as an architect. But I want to start talking more about details. I'm going to start coming out with more videos like this because it is really important. Now I will say too, if you are on the podcast and just listening, as always, I'm going to link the blog so you can go and check out any photos so that you can get a visual for when I'm chatting through things. And then also I want to say, I mentioned this in the last episode too, is that if you have certain books from your exams, don't just get rid of all of them. I used, when I was going through this, you can see I even still have my, my stickies in here, but Building Construction Illustrated was super helpful when I was going through these details. So proper details can really make or break a project. And if you want to get fancy and try up something new and figure out a new system, it's really helpful to be able to reference these sort of materials, which we need for our exams for a reason. They have really good information. And when you really understand a detail and the reason why you need to do things a certain way, it allows you to play with it a little bit more and be more flexible because you understand the science and the reasoning behind things. So Building Construction Illustrated, if you do have your book and you want to follow along, I'm in the wood roofing area, which is chapter six. And I'm going to talk about a few different details that I looked at to help figure things out. Um, and then this also came up because I got a question today that said, because we have this uh, bunch of standard notes that um, we include on our construction documents. And this question came in um, from a team member who was working on our documents and just wanted to understand this better, which I love that it's, again, it's not 
not just putting on a standard note, it's understanding why that's a standard note. So the question was, can you explain this to me a little bit? If the insulation is installed this way, it helps with thermal moisture and ventilation isn't required. And the note is, no ventilation is required in areas where roof insulation is installed between rafters with no air spaces between insulation and roof sheathing. So the key phrase or the key note in that sentence is there is no airspace between the insulation and the sheathing. And I'm going to talk about vaulted ceilings here because that was what we were dealing with. That's also where you're going to have this detail because when you have an attic, you have the ceiling system and then you have the roof rafters over it. So you have all this interstitial space to play around with, to add insulation, to do whatever you need to do. So it's, it's a separate system. Now, now, if you have a vaulted ceiling, also sometimes called a cathedral ceiling, then you have the ceiling. I'm going to put up some details here so you can visualize it too. But you have the ceiling and you have within the, the ceiling, the roof rafters essentially create the ceiling. So you have the roof rafters and then you have your gypsum board or whatever your interior finish is. And you have your insulation in between. And then you have your sheathing, which is like your plywood. And then you have your roof finish on top, right? And so there's a couple things that come with that. One is you have to be able to have enough gap in order to fit whatever the insulation requirement is. And the insulation requirement will be based on your location, the climate, and uh, the title. 24 energy requirements and all that good stuff. Here it's typically R30. And so R30 comes with a specific depth. Now, because you don't have a lot of space, you really don't have anywhere for air to flow through. So when you have your attic space, you have this whole interstitial space, you have space for air to move. And you have typically like a ridge vent or you'll have vents on the eaves or you'll have vents on the, if you have like a gable roof, you'll have vents on the ends. And you know, air is moving, air is constantly going through. But when you have this small cavity, there isn't space for air to move. And this is critical because you need airflow in order to prevent condensation. You need airflow or you need a tight system and you need specific insulation. So when you don't have airflow, that means air is not coming through. And if you have bat insulation or an open cell insulation, so bat insulation is like a really typical insulation. And if you look at insulation, that's open cell insulation. It's kind of looks like, you know, cotton candy or um, what else? I don't know. I'm just so used to insulation. I'm trying to think of like what else insulation looks like. <laughs> Say cotton candy or cotton, you know, batting. And if you think about it, there's all that open cell. And so there's a lot of area for condensation to sit in and turn into mold. And that is where you can come up with a lot of issues. If water comes into that space, it gets that bat insulation wet. There's nowhere for it to dry out because there's no airflow. So there's nothing to dry out that bat insulation and it's just gonna sit in there and it's gonna get nasty and it's gonna mold and hopefully, you'll start seeing some damage from that before it's too late or you won't see damage and you're going to be inside that space breathing this moldy insulation. So it's not good for the structural safety health of the roof system. And it's also not good for the indoor environmental air quality. So how we want to prevent that is a couple things. One, if you can get proper airflow through there in order to dissipate that condensation so that it doesn't sit in there, then that's great. Now with the wing house, I didn't have that opportunity because I just didn't have enough space. So I believe we used two by 12s in our roof rafters because we were spanning the whole system. And so it wasn't like I had a two by six and then I could have like an air gap and then I could have the roof sheathing. We were already dealing with like a two by 12, which is 11 and a quarter inches thick. And it was just getting too thick. It was getting too thick. I, there wasn't enough space. So what we had to do was create an enclosure that would allow for proper thermal quality and also make sure that we weren't going to be getting built up of condensation, which 
which could then rot the insulation because the insulation really is like this organic material that is just like holding on and will mold. So what we had to do is make sure that you're designing it properly to have it be tight and also make sure that you only use closed cell insulation. So you cannot use bat insulation when you don't have that airflow available because there is those air gaps within bat insulation that requires that flow. Now I've had this question before and I think it's a good question is, well, what about wall systems? Because wall systems not always have that air gap, especially here in San Diego. We don't typically design an air gap, but you should. <laughs> I guess I'm just gonna say it like that. Like if you are, and I think for the architecture exams, you really do wanna design that air gap um, from the exterior so that whatever rain anything coming in is breathing and getting out before coming in. Now in San Diego, I have detailed it on plans before and had contractors call me and be like, this is going to cost way more money. Nobody does this here. The client doesn't want it. Nobody wants it. And I'm like, okay, this is what we're supposed to do. So <laughs> I don't know. I want to hear if you are architect in San Diego, what's the deal with the air gaps? Do we do them? Why don't we do them? Why does, why don't any of the contractors do them? I don't understand. Okay. So you want to have rigid insulation in there. Now the rigid insulation is a closed cell or any sort of closed cell insulation, but it's typically rigid insulation. If you've seen rigid insulation, I'll put a little picture up here. It's a system that is tight. SIP panels have this, structurally insulated panels are also designed with a rigid insulation. And so you don't have to deal with this because they're so tightly compacted. So that's why they also use a rigid insulation. Now this prevents airflow. So it is a tight, tight system. There's no airflow coming in there. And then the idea is that then you're not dealing with a buildup of condensation. Now, ironically, when you don't have a air gap, you wanna make sure that is sealed. You wanna make sure that there isn't air coming in. Now, of course, there's gonna be some penetrations here and there, but you wanna make sure the contractor is properly sealing everything so you are not getting that air infiltration. Because now that we don't have that air gap, we don't want any air or water or anything in there because there's nowhere for it to go. But that's why we use rigid insulation so that if some happens to get in there, it's not then penetrating the insulation and building up that mold. Okay, so this came with the next step. So I came over to my building construction illustrated. There is a diagram on 6.19 that shows how you can do a cathedral ceiling with that air gap. Again, it wouldn't work for us and what we were looking for. So I continued looking through. Um, there's more details on wood craft after framing. Let's see, there's more details on, I even looked at like flat roof assemblies because I knew that with the flat roofs, typically there's not an air gap. So I'm like, okay, well, they have it figured out here. How can we do it? There is a detail on flat roof assemblies 7.13 that does show an air gap vented space, but it's not often. And so the ones underneath show that rigid insulation with that roof deck and everything. So I'm like, okay, this is going to start showing me what I need to do and how to detail it. And then 7.43. And again, I'm only just saying this because if you're studying for your exams, it's helpful to like go check it out. Building Construction Illustrated is an incredible book. And again, don't get rid of it. Once you become a licensed architect, use this stuff, use it to become a better architect. So insulating roofs and floors was also helpful. That's on 7.43. Yeah, I just looked at the roof conditions and again, didn't have that airspace. And so I was trying to figure out how to best do it. The thing that I came into is, all right, if I have this ceiling insulation roof system, what about recessed can lights? I thought I can't do that. I can't do a recessed can light because the whole concept is you have this super airtight container. If now we're cutting a hole in this system and putting a can light, you're creating not only that thermal bridge that we talked about in the last episode, but you're also reducing the insulation in that part. It's gonna be all the hot air or cold air is just gonna come right through those can lights. And so I realized can lights, I can't do them. I liked this challenge because instead 
instead of just a typical can light system, I had to get really creative with how we were gonna do the overall lights that would make it comfortable and well lit. But it also led to a lot of hidden lights, which was really cool. So we ended up running tracks under or on the side of some of the exposed beams. We do have a pendant light, but we detailed it in a way that it isn't, it's just on the surface, it's not penetrating. And then we just did a lot of ambient light and under counter light and all that stuff. And so it's not only the details of something like a roof system, but take it one step further where, okay, well, what does that mean for something like, you know, an air fan? How do you detail that? How do you work around that? And so looking at the details, figuring it out, looking at other case studies. And this is the thing too, it felt like I had so many case studies because so many mid-century houses do this. But I also realized a couple things is the mid-century houses didn't have the same insulation, thermal requirements, energy requirements that we have now. But then I also realized that there's some ways that you can hide it. This The modern architecture is kind of all about how you can hide things, get creative with it and disguise it. So one thing I would do differently next time, and I haven't said this publicly, I love that building. I think it's amazing. I think it's, it was such a fun project to figure out and design. But the fascia is too thick for me, and I don't even want to say it out loud because I don't want other people to see it. But in an ideal world, the fascia would have been slimmer. And this is a really typical detail that you see in these old mid-century houses because they didn't have any insulation requirements. There's probably not even insulation in that roof. And it's like this tiny, seamless thing. But I had considered, I'm like, okay, well, how do you do that? Because if we were creating a seamless view of ceiling to Eve and the windows go all the way up to the bottom, I couldn't make this shorter if this was longer because you would see that gap. And so now that I have thought it through, what I think I would do different next time, and it would, I think, give a little bit of a different aesthetic. It's something I would play with in the future on future projects, but I think I would taper the roof rafters slightly to get a thinner fascia board and kind of bring up that eave, just angling it just slightly to create a little bit of a slimmer profile around the edge. So that's, I think, what I would do, try out next time and play around with and see if there's something I can play around with there. But I don't think this would have worked anyways because we had the structure that we needed in the um, the roof rafters. So I don't think this would have worked, but sometimes if you can get away with smaller roof rafters, but that cavity won't fit insulation because it's not uh, deep enough. One thing that some architects will do is actually build up on top of the roof another layer of insulation. And so from the outside, when you're looking at it, it's slim. You've got the proper, you know, seamless inside to outside. But on the top, when you come back from the ridge, and if you look at it from outside, there's a slight buildup and it's an extra insulation. And so that's a way to get some more insulation to fit those energy requirements. There's tons of fun things you can do with details. That's the thing about you know designing modern, cool buildings is you get to play around with it. And that's really where being an architect is fun because you are getting to think outside the box and play around with things, make mistakes, but learn from them and continue continually become a better architect. If you're taking your exams, when you are going through it and you're looking at these details, remember it from that point of view. Remember it as a way to better understand why you are de detailing it the way you're detailing it so that you can challenge it in the future and do it differently. But you can do it differently while still maintaining a healthy building. Okay, I hope that you gained some amazing little insights from that. I hope when you are sitting for your exam, you can think back and be like, oh yeah, the wing house couldn't be ventilated because there was, or it couldn't use bat insulation because there was no ventilation. And why do we need ventilation? Because condensation and what is condensation and why is it such an issue? <laughs> I'll be in your head. And then also when you're designing buildings too, make sure if you're vaulting a ceiling, you're figuring out a proper air gap or you're figuring out something to deal with the condensation and thermal and all that good stuff. Okay. And if you haven't checked out the last week's episode about thermal bridging, go check that out too. It kind of goes into play with this one, except I'm talking about floor systems instead of roof systems. And if you have already checked out that one, then make sure you check out this next video. Okay, see you next week.